Algorithms to Live By is a book by Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths that merges computer science with every day. The authors did a great job in making it a fun introductory read for those who do not really know how computers work and a cool way to learn how to live better, even if you're already very experienced in computer science. An algorithm is really just a recipe, a series of steps we can follow to solve a very specific problem that can be rerun as often as we like and will always provide a solution. Our brains use them all the time to focus on just the essential facts at hand or approximate incomplete information and thus allow us to make a decision without getting paralyzed. Here are the top seven lessons from Brian Christian and Tom Griffith's Algorithms to Live By. Lesson one, realize that algorithms are not limited to computers. Most people associate algorithms with forms of technology like computers. However, the word itself actually dates back to the 9th century. Muhammad al-Khwarizmi, a Persian mathematician, is the first person to use the word algorithm. However, the use of concepts like algorithms dates even further back to the Sumerians, a civilization that existed 4,000 years ago. This civilization learned to use a finite number of steps to solve problems, just like how we use a finite number of steps to complete multiple tasks each day. And this is also the technique at the heart of algorithms. So long as a set of finite steps are followed, then it can be an algorithm. A recipe, for example, is a type of algorithm. It involves a series of steps to obtain a desired result. Writing up a list of pros and cons when doing something is an intuitive algorithm. We might consider these kinds of algorithms as more subjective than computer algorithms. But still, these algorithms use the same process and reach the same solutions. Lesson two, know that algorithms can tell us when to start. The authors gave the example of a slot machine where some people will just sit at the machine until they win. However, there's always that thought in people's minds if they should simply walk away despite losing a lot of money. One common strategy used by gamblers is to stay if they're winning and shift if they're losing. However, this isn't exactly a logical way of choosing when to explore something new. A better method, the authors suggested, is to use the upper confidence bound algorithm. One, we need to look for a machine that offers the best expected value. Two, while we are playing, we need to make sure that we keep track of the real outcome. Three, if the real outcome is consistently lower than our expected outcome, we should move on to another machine. Four, repeat the process. Lesson three, know that algorithms can tell us when to stop. As humans, we struggle to realize when to stop searching for something. Additionally, we have cognitive biases that impact our choices when searching for this timing. The authors suggest that the optimal stopping algorithm is a solution to this. If there are 100 options available, this algorithm will state that we should look at the first 37 without taking any of them and use these first 37 as a standard. Subsequently, whichever item that meets these standards should be taken. This algorithm will not guarantee the best result, but it will mean we have a much higher chance of acquiring an item significantly better than just guessing. It doesn't matter what we are searching for, 37% of the total is where we draw our standard. Lesson four, organize work using algorithms. The authors explained that organized chaos can be fine. As long as we know where everything is, we will be productive. The authors describe three specific algorithms. Bubble sort. This algorithm is the least efficient of the three. With this method, we organize one pair at a time. Then we repeat this process over and over until everything is sorted. Insertion sort. This method is far more efficient if we have to sort a substantial amount of items. If we consider a book analogy, the insertion sort method will involve taking all the books off the shelf and then placing them back one by one, ensuring that the books are placed in the correct order each time we place a book. Merge sort. Finally, the merge sort method involves dividing everything into multiple piles, sorted from A to Z, and then these piles would be merged. Lesson five, schedule your life through algorithms. Scheduling our lives is often a daily challenge and can be highly complex. However, some algorithms can help improve how we schedule our life. The earliest due date algorithm. The first task we complete is the one with the nearest deadline, Moore's algorithm. This algorithm recommends skipping the task which requires the most time. This algorithm is more effective when we don't have enough time to complete every task. Lesson six, predict the future using algorithm. Although no one can ever be sure of what will happen in the future, it is still possible to predict what will probably happen. Predicting probable outcomes is doable when using the correct algorithms. Lesson seven, understand that algorithms have limits. Complicated scenarios require complex algorithms to fully understand what's happening. However, algorithms are limited in the complexity with which they can be applied to. The issue is that when we're predicting something complex, we get tempted to add variables until the algorithm can fully explain our data, which includes explaining the errors. 
Doing this, however, is problematic, as it can lead to something called overfitting. We have made the model highly complicated and specific to the data we are using, making it inapplicable flexibly to other data. In conclusion, algorithms satisfy us with good enough rather than always striving for perfection. Our brains are built similar to computers. Therefore, just like with computers, we should start complementing them with algorithms. Have you noticed the algorithm you've naturally been doing? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my new content. You can also get a free copy of the audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time.